Good morning. Welcome to Baker Memorial United Methodist Church. Thank you to all of you who chose to spend time this morning fellowshipping with one another prior to worship. These are um, these fellowship hours are happening each Sunday in Advent starting at 9 a.m. So everyone is welcome to join. And they're still fellowshipping in there. So we're just going to go on with the announcements, and we hope that they'll come in. Bill? Uh, good morning. My name is Bill Cope. I'm your liturgist for today. And again, welcome to Baker, whether you're joining us in person in our beautiful sanctuary or joining us online. Baker Church, we are a reconciling church where diversity is welcomed and respected. A couple of announcements this morning. If you can pick up the What's Happening page, you were probably handed one of these when you walked in. A couple of announcements I want to just highlight. Um, today, after worship, right after worship, we'll have our, our adult discussion group. And then also tonight at 6 p.m. will be our youth fellowship. On Monday, at 12 o'clock, will be our Love and Learn group. On Tuesday, I want to highlight our prayer meeting at 7 p.m. All are welcome for the prayer meeting at, at 7. On Thursday is our sign language class at 6 p.m. And also, I want to highlight on Saturday, we're going to have our ride event, which is our journey to Bethlehem. And we're going to have Judy come up in a second and talk about that. Um, one last announcement here. Um, we had several things for sale this morning. One thing you might have noticed, there's some Christmas green arrangements. Those are also for sale. Um, the proceeds for that go to the Millard Fillmore House. Um, please see Margie or Marjorie or Marianne if you want more details on that. And Judy, if you want to come up for a second. Good morning. We are all very excited about what's happening on next Saturday. And uh, I just wanted to remind everybody, it's at 6 o'clock. Um, hopefully the weather is going to be fine. So when you come into the church, you'll be coming in our back entrance as we normally do. Um, and there's a few things. A lot of people have been asking me, what can they do to help? So I have a few things that came to my attention. Um, what is this we're helping with, Judy? What's the journey it to Bethlehem. The journey to Bethlehem. Sorry. Okay. As you can tell, this is just off the cuff. Okay. <laughs> um, we are going to have the whole, from the chapel over, and all the back is going to be dark because, after all, we didn't have electricity back in the day of, of Jesus' birth. So we need battery-operated candles. If you have any, we, we don't have to have glass. We could just have the candles to light um, up the rooms as we do our little spiel. Um, please put your name on the bottom of it, and the day after the event, I will have them all lined up for you, and you can get them right back to your home. If you could get them to the church by Wednesday, that would be awesome. Um, also, if you'll take a look at the sign-up sheet, um, I know we have a lot of wise men in this church, so we need some wise men for our nativity. To, um, and if you'd be willing, the costumes, all you don't have to say anything. You just have to stand there and, and look handsome, I guess. <laughs> look wise. You don't have to wear a beard unless you have your own beard. That would be fine. Um, and also, we have a donkey that's coming along, hopefully with a lamb and, and um, goats. But we need a trailer to bring that donkey here and to take him back home. So um, if you know of anyone that has a small horse trailer that we could, I think it's coming from Marilla, in Lancaster area, um, that would, you'd be willing to maybe help transport our donkey for our nativity, that would be very appreciated. So please set it on your calendar, mark it. There will be candles and Christmas carols, and there was another C word, and I know I should have written it down. What was that word? But anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun, and we hope that um, you'll join us. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. So welcome to worship. 
I have two more announcements before we get into our Old Testament reading. One is, very briefly, I sent out an email before Thanksgiving inviting you to consider an Israel trip in uh, March, middle of March of 2023. If you did not see that email and would like information, please contact me. And lastly, there are still stars on the star tree in the chapel. Those stars translate into gifts that go to the children in the area of Seneca Street, United Methodist Church. If you are willing and able, please take one of those stars. All right, thank you. Let's begin our worship with our Old Testament reading. This is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. Like a branch that sprouts from a stump, someone from David's family will someday be king. The Spirit of the Lord will be with him and give him understanding, wisdom, and insight. He will be powerful, and we will know and honor, and he will know and honor the Lord. His greatest joy will be to obey the Lord. This king won't judge by appearances or listen to rumors. The poor and the needy will be treated with fairness and justice. His word will be law everywhere in the land, and criminals will be put to death. Honesty and fairness will be his royal robes. Lepers will lie down with young goats, and wolves will rest with the lambs. Calves and lions will eat together and be cared for by little children. Cows and bears will share the same pasture. Their young will rest by their sides. Lions and oxen will both eat straw. Little children will play near snake holes. They will stick their hands into the dens of poisonous snakes and never be hurt. Nothing harmful will take place on the Lord's holy mountain. Just as water fills the sea, the land will be filled with people who know and honor the Lord. The time is coming when one of David's descendants will be the signal for the people of all nations to come together. They will follow his advice and his own nation will become famous. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Would you join me in an opening prayer? Merciful God, come. Come and be with us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. To continue in an attitude of prayer as we hear our prelude this morning.
I invite the Hilliard family to come forward and lead us through our Advent candle liturgy. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. We are the followers of the root of Jesse Isaiah spoke of. We are the ones who are now called to stand as a signal to the world, to all creation, that peace is the will of the one who created us. Peace is the knowledge of the Lord that we proclaim from sea to shining sea. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near, and bear fruit worthy of repentance. We light these candles, the candle of joyful hope and the candle of proclaimed peace, in part to remind ourselves that we are the people, we are a people rising toward God's promise. We also light them as a sign to the world, an announcement that there are some who hold on to hope and there are some who work the ways of peace. We stand as a sign that Emmanuel is still our fervent prayer. Thank you. Now would you join together in singing our opening hymn, which is number two and 211 in the hymnal, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. The words will be also on the screens. Please stand as you are willing and able.
As you remain standing, please turn and greet your Baker family with a, with a hand wave and a smile. It's great to see everyone here today. Please be seated for our New Testament reading. This is from Romans chapter 15, verses 4 through 13. The scriptures were written to teach and encourage us by giving us hope. God is the one who makes us patient and cheerful. I pray that, we will help, that he will help you live at peace with each other as you follow Christ. Then all of you together will praise God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The good news is for Jews and Gentiles. Honor God by accepting each other as Christ has accepted you. I tell you that Christ came as a servant of the Jews to show that God has kept the promises he made to their famous ancestors. Christ also came so that the Gentiles would praise God for being kind to them. It is just as the scriptures say, I tell you, the nations about you and, all, and I will sing praises to your name. The scriptures also say to the Gentiles, come and celebrate with God's people. Again, the scriptures say, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, all you nations come and worship him. And Isaiah says, someone from David's family will come to power. He will rule the nations and they will put their hope in him. I pray that God who gives hope will bless you with complete happiness and peace because of your faith. And may the power of the Holy Spirit fill you with hope. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. As the choir is preparing to lead us in our offertory anthem, I call us to consider what we would offer ourselves, of ourselves, this week to God. Not only as a financial offering that we give back to the church, but perhaps some other form of offering that God is calling us to give for the good and the proclamation of the kingdom of God. As the choir sings, I encourage you to listen carefully to their words, to their lyrics. Perhaps God may have something to speak to you through this music.
We do give you praise and thanksgiving, most merciful God, for the words that you give to us, words of comfort, joy, hope, and peace. We ask you, Lord, to lead us and guide us to use the gifts that you have given us and the gifts that we have returned to your church for your glory in all that we do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please be seated? This morning's gospel reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 1 through 12, from the New International Version. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sudeges coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. I tell you that, out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The ax is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chafe with unquestionable fire. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Would you please be seated? Remember last week I taught you about the lectionary scriptures? Some of you may remember that. So the lectionary is a listing of scriptures that goes through the entire Bible. There's daily readings that have Old Testament, Psalm, New Testament, and Gospel every single day. I had one person come to me and say, could I have that list? If anyone is interested in that list, I have it. If you want to see them, um, this can get you to read through the entirety of the Bible in three years. Okay? Today's readings, remember last week I talked about how we have reverted back to year A. So we're back to the beginning of the lectionary. We started with Isaiah chapter 11. And in this passage... We are, we are given the prophecy of a peaceful coexistence with all other living things. Peace. That was the candle that we lit this morning. That we are proclaiming peace. That God is telling us that peace is coming into those who choose God. And eventually, peace will come to all creation at the second coming of Jesus Christ. And in the New Testament reading, Paul is praying, not just writing and proclaiming, but praying for.
for the Roman church as well as all of us. He says, I pray that God will help you live at peace with each other, that we might be an example of what that coming peaceful coexistence with all of creation will be. Paul is praying for that for us. And he says at the end of this Romans reading, I pray that God, who gives hope, will bless you with complete happiness and peace because of your faith. And may the power of the Holy Spirit fill you with hope. So then we go into this gospel reading where John the Baptist comes. Did you hear the first words that John the Baptist says that are recorded here? He says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And if we look at Mark's gospel, Jesus says the almost exact same thing when he begins his ministry after coming back from being 40 days in the desert wilderness. He says, the time has come, the kingdom of God is near, repent and believe the good news. How does the kingdom of God come near? Does anybody have any idea how the kingdom of God comes near to us? Faith in the Lord Jesus is what Mary is saying. That was alluded to in the Romans reading. It's through our faith in the Lord Jesus. Through the power of the Holy Spirit that enters into us when we receive the Lord Jesus in faith. Now, I read this morning my daily devotion. I'm just going to share this with you. I've never shared this with you before, but I've, I've told you that I believe it is very helpful to our faith, to grow in our faith, that we all take up some habit of having a daily devotion. The one that I'm using currently is from this book called Psalms Through the Year, Spiritual Exercises for Every Day. You know what exercise means? Most of us probably don't like to do exercises, right? Exercise helps us stay healthy. So that's why we do it. This is an exercise of our faith to help keep our faith healthy. The reading for this morning is the f last four verses in Psalm number 136. Is anybody familiar with that psalm? There's one phrase that is repeated throughout the entire psalm. It is this. God's love endures forever. Has anybody ever heard that before? God's love endures forever. The last four verses say this. To the one who remembered us in our lowest state, God's love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies, God's love endures forever. And who gives food to every creature, God's love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for God's love endures forever. Now, when I started reading the Psalms on a regular basis, this Psalm has 26 verses. In every verse, that phrase is repeated. God's love endures forever. Now, when I first started reading this, I didn't always read the God's love endures forever because I felt like it was repetitive. But you know what I've learned? Sometimes I need something that's repetitive to really be able to grasp its meaning and embrace it. Now, I want to read you just a little bit of what is written in this book 
exercising our faith, reading the Psalms through the year. Um, this is by Marshall D. Johnson, in case anybody wants to know. Marshall D. Johnson. He writes, and this is just the last paragraph of today's devotion. It is now time to ask exactly what is God's steadfast love. The Hebrew word is hesed. Anybody ever heard that word before? Hebrew word, hesed. It means steadfast love. And it is variously translated as goodness, mercy, grace, fidelity, faithfulness, kindness, devotion, beauty, compassionate love, and in other ways. The word encompasses all those nuances, and it thus points to the beneficent heart of God. The divine essence is not ultimately wrath and judgment, and not even unmitigated justice. G grace and mercy lie at the heart of the universe, and we would do well to strive to imitate that hesed that gracious, steadfast love of God in all of our doings in our brief time on this earth. Do you want peace? You don't sound convincing. Do you want peace? Really? Do you really want peace? Do you want peace in the world? Yes. So what today's message is about is all of us, through the gift of faith and the presence of the Holy Spirit within us, we are the ones that demonstrate and offer that peace to the rest of society that we have contact with. Because we then exemplify what that promise in Isaiah shows us that all creation lives in harmony and peace at the return of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God for that message. Amen. As we prepare for Holy Communion, please listen to this invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. In the United Methodist Church, we celebrate Holy Communion with an open table. That means all are welcome to receive the sacrament, a fresh anointing of God's grace. Please join me in this, in this prayer of confession. Almighty and all-loving God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have reconciled the world to yourself. Help us now to be reconciled with one another, that again we might dwell in the warmth of your love. Inspire us with your Holy Spirit to put aside the cloak of pride and take on the mind and heart of Christ, that we might forgive and be forgiven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in a moment of silent confession. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant us remission from all our sins. Help us be truly repentant to turn away from sin and give us the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If you wish to follow along with the sung responses, they are on page 19 in your red Methodist hymnals in front of you.
All the other responses will be on the screens behind me. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you send away empty. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering to us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, gathered here, upon those of us gathered watching remotely, and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, 
until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 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 And let us now sing the prayer that Jesus taught us together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. This morning, I will ask the ushers to guide you to the center aisle to form two lines. Come forward. There will be four servers. Servers, if you would come forward at this time. As you come to your servers, please have your hands out and ready, and they will place a piece of the bread in your hands. Receive the bread and then go to the next server, and they will offer you a cup that you just Lift off of the plate with your hands, receive it, and then there are receptacles that you can put the cups in at the ends of the communion rail. If you wish to be served in your pews, just raise your hand and Connie will come to you and serve you. If you need gluten-free, also please let your servant know and gluten-free is available here. The table is open to all who choose to receive God's gifts Come forward and receive. The choir is going to come down first. Play. 
To bring peace, to be loved, to be nearer to us, you've called. To bring light, to be light, to shine brighter in us, so we
you join your minds and hearts with my words as we offer prayers of intercession. Glory to you, Lord. We give you thanks and praise for your presence. God with us, Emmanuel. Thank you, Lord, for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in our hearts, minds, and entire beings through our receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you that you have come to show us the way to live a life that is filled with your peace and with your joy. And we come to you this morning again, humbly, in prayer, as you have called us to do so, seeking to intercede on behalf of others who are in need of your work in their lives. We lift to you, Joe Pauly, to baby Charlotte, Bridget and Ty, Jason and his family, and Lee. You know the needs of each of these persons, physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional, relational, whatever it may be, Lord, we know that you are the great healer, and we call upon you to bring healing upon each of these individuals. We also lift to you Steve, Mia, Linda, Eileen, Gretchen, Larry, Debbie, Kevin, Luda, Dotsy, and Kathy, who are also seeking healing, health, and wholeness. And Lord, there are others that we have on our minds at this moment that you have brought back to our minds. And we lift the names of those persons to you now, either in the silence of our hearts or with our voices. We lift these persons to you, Lord, because we believe that you will hear us. We believe, Lord, that you will answer us as you see fit for the good of each person, for the good of our belief and faith to increase and help us exercise that belief and faith that you have given to us as a gift. And, Lord, if there be opportunity, especially in this season of giving, that we may be your vessel, that you might work through us in some way to be a blessing to someone else, show us, give us opportunity, give us resources and time to be that blessing. And help us to be bold. Help us to not walk away when we feel your nudge to say to us, simply go and be a blessing to that individual. Help us to be bold and brave and be that blessing. Because we know, Lord, that when we are a blessing to someone else, we are blessed. 
We thank you and we praise you for all your good gifts to us. And we thank you that you give us the opportunity to share those gifts with others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you now stand as you are willing and able and sing our closing hymn, number 209 in the red hymnals, Blessed Be the God of Israel. Words will be also on the screen. Amen. How many, of you, how many of you are familiar with this tune? So I'm going to thank Jeff for having us sing this song because I have been in the United Methodist Church since 1975, and this is not to say that I don't have any cheese, you know, Swiss cheese holes in my memory, but I don't remember singing this before. So thank you. I'm grateful. This is, this is nice. Yeah, let's, let's sing that again sometime. So... We have received a blessing from God in this service this morning, and we have offered God ourselves as sacrifices of praise. So go out into the world and share something of a blessing to someone else who needs it. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>